Hello everyone, my name is Josh Powell and I chose to do my final presentation on Constellation Brands for Strategic Management, taught by Brandon Schulte. But first, a little history. In 1945, Marvin Sands purchased Canandaigua Industries in upstate New York. By 1951, they recorded their first million dollar in sales. In 1954, they introduced Richard's Wild Irish Brand Wine. This introduction spearheaded the growth of the company with its unique franchising system. Two decades later, in 1973, they changed their name to the Canandaigua Wine Company. In that same year, they chose to go public on the New York Stock Exchange. By 1980, they were the eighth largest wine producer in the U.S. <clears throat> in 1992, they acquired Barton Inc., adding beer brands like Corona and also liquors including gin, vodka, bourbon, and tequila. In 2000, the company changed its name to what it is today, Constellation Brands. In 2013, Grupo Modelo was acquired from Anheuser-Busch, giving Constellation Brands the rights to sell Corona Extra, Corona Lights, Modelo Especial, and Pacifico in all 50 states. In 2014, a state-of-the-art glass production facility was purchased in Mexico. And by 2015, they were the third largest producer and marketer of beer in the U.S. and the second largest producer of wine in the U.S., Canada, and New Zealand. For their company vision and mission statements, <clears throat> the company vision is to elevate life with every glass. According to their website, Constellation Brands wants to help people enjoy life a little more, celebrate the small moments, and make big occasions even more special. Their mission statement is build brands that people love. Also on their website, it says Constellation is passionate about building brands that people love and helping people connect with one another. <clears throat> On to the five forces. Rivalry among competing firms is strong. <clears throat> There's a lot of people competing for, excuse me, companies competing for market around the world. While Constellation Brands is strong in North America, there's a lot of other competitors around the world. There's a potential development of substitute products. Um, it's moderately strength, in my opinion. However, there's a scientific study underway that could seriously impact the alcohol producing industry. A British scientist has developed an alcohol substitute that could give alcohol consumers a buzz without a hangover the next day. It also has zero calories and could potentially reduce alcoholism. There's also a growing threat for recreational marijuana use in the U.S. that could also threaten the alcohol industry. Every year more and more states are legalizing marijuana and over time it could be a substitute for alcohol. <clears throat> There's a lot of strength for new competitors. Uh, in 2016, the total number of breweries in the U.S. was 5,301, which was a 17% increase from 2015. Consumers also have a lot of power. There are thousands of options for alcohol to choose from, giving consumers a lot of the power to choose what they want. There's also a lot of power for suppliers. Uh, many beers require a specific set of hops to produce the beer. This leaves producers at the mercy of the hop farmers. <clears throat> Onto the EFE matrix. <clears throat> the external factor evaluation metrics allows st strategists to summarize and evaluate economical, social, cultural, demographic, environmental, political, governmental, legal, technological, and competitive information according to David and David in our textbook. <clears throat> The highest score a company can get is 4.0, and I gave Constellation Brands a 3.41. Some of their biggest opportunities comes in the form of expanding their markets. Recent studies have shown that foreign beer and wine consumption is, in China is steadily rising. Also, alcohol demand in India is growing, which is India is one of the most densely populated countries on the planet. Alcohol consumption is up 55% over the last 20 years. <clears throat> For the SWOT analysis, for strength opportunities, the best thing Constellation Brands can do is campaign to reach new customers in the thriving economy. That includes China and India, which were just mentioned. For, for strength threat strategies, there's a threat to beer sales uh, around the industry. Uh, over the last 20 years, beer sales are down 10%. However, Constellation Brands, thanks to the help of their large Mexican beer portfolio, 
their beer sales are up 10%. <clears throat> For weakness opportunities, the best thing they could do is look to acquire local independent brewers and wineries. Uh, this will help recapture some of the lost market from all the breweries and wineries popping up every year. For weakness threats, I suggested Constellation Brands develop a cannabis infused drink to help combat the threat of recreational marijuana use. <clears throat> For the CPM or competitive profile matrix, this matrix identifies a company's major competitors and its particular strengths and weaknesses in relation to a sample company's st strategic position. Uh, the CPM and EFE have the same weighted scoring system. The rival companies I chose were Constellation Brands' two top competitors, Anheuser-Busch and Heineken. Constellation Brands received a 3.63, Anheuser-Busch a 3.73, and Heineken finished with a 3.22. <clears throat> For the IFE matrix, an IFE matrix or internal factor evaluation matrix summarizes and evaluates the major weaknesses and strengths of Constellation Brands in the functional areas of business, and it also provides a basis for identifying and evaluating relationships among those areas. <clears throat> Constellation Brands received a 3.02 out of 4 on the IFE. Uh, the most important strengths that have led to the continued success of Constellation Brands is its top producer of wine and beer status in North America. <clears throat> for the BCG matrix, or Boston Consulting Group matrix, this matrix allows a multi-divisional organization to manage its portfolio of businesses by examining two dimensions for each division relative to other divisions in the organization, according to David and David in our textbook. The two dimensions used to graphically portray differences among divisions are relative market share position and industry growth rate, which is on the y-axis. Constellation Brands divisional breakup is really simple. There are only two divisions. One division is beer, and the other division is wine and spirits. The top company in the industry for beer division was Anheuser-Busch, with approximately $8 billion in sales, and the top company in the, in, in the wine industry in, in spirits for sales is Diageo, which is a London-based company with approximately $4.13 billion in sales in 2017. The Space Matrix is a chart with a framework of four quadrants indicating whether aggressive, conservative, defensive, or competitive strategies are most appropriate for a given organization. In this matrix, Constellation Brands is blue, Anheuser-Busch is red, and Heineken is green. I feel this is an accurate representation of how these companies are. The, there are a lot of acquisitions going on, and which leads to very aggressive behavior trying to overtake more of the market. <clears throat> So my recommendations for, excuse me, for ratios and calculations from the last three years, some notable points are the operating margin, which was a little lower in 2015, but a lot better in 2016, 2017. Also take note of the 11.49 uh, earnings per share for 2017, and also the working capital, which was triple what it was in 2016 at 1529 For recommendations, my recommendation is to make a significant investment in expanding sales in the European and Asian market. This recommendation has three parts. First part is begin a campaign to increase sales of Svedka vodka in Russia. The second part is continue to establish a wine market and work to establish a foothold in the quickly growing foreign beer market in China. And the third part is to begin a campaign to establish a foothold in the quickly emerging high demand market in India. In order to acquire the funds necessary to implement this three part European and Asian plan, I estimated that $1.2 billion will be needed. $200 million will be acquired by decreasing dividends paid for the 2018 year. $50 million will be acquired by offering stock to be purchased. 100 million will be used from the increase in sales for the 2018 year, and the last 850 million needed will be acquired by taking on additional long-term debt. <clears throat> While Constellation Brands already has a significant amount of debt, it is expected the debt will be paid back in just a few years once 
shares of the Russia and emerging India and Chinese markets are captured. For the Russia plan, Russia is known for being a country that likes to drink vodka and is part of a continent that has some of the highest demand for alcohol in the world. Constellation Brands offers a high quality vodka in Svedka, which is distributed in Sweden. It's fairly close to Russia, uh, much like how Constellation Brands has done in the U.S. with its Mexican beer portfolio. I suggest Constellation Brands start a campaign to advertise and increase sales of Svetka Vodka in Russia. $200 million will be used to create a campaign to advertise and offer deals for Svetka Vodka in Russia. Distribution channels are already established in Russia and Europe, so $200 million is estimated to be more than sufficient for the campaign. For China, Constellation Brands has already established a long-term deal to distribute high-quality wines in China, which is quickly increasing its demand for foreign alcohol products. I suggest Constellation Brands use $250 million of the $1.2 billion available to establish a campaign to introduce its beer portfolio to China. The $250 million will be used to establish an advertising campaign, offer deals on beer products, and establish any necessary distribution channels. For India, by 2020, India is predicted to be one of the largest markets for alcohol products in the world. Uh, much like China, their demand for alcohol is growing very quickly. Anheuser-Busch and Heineken have already been working to introduce their products to the Indian market. The remaining $750 million from our $1.2 billion will be used to establish a campaign, offer deals, and build distribution channels and partnerships in India. While India's demand for foreign alcohol products is quickly growing, it was a small market not so long ago, so a significant amount of funds must be allocated to this part of the plan in order to establish a significant foothold on a large sharehold of the emerging Indian market. <clears throat> the expected ratios after this plan, operation profit mar margin will increase by 7% from 2017. Earnings per share will also increase to 14.32. Working capital will see a good increase as well. Uh, the debt to total assets and debt to equity will not increase, but we expect those to get better after we would um, make back the funds we took out as loans. In conclusion, Constellation Brands is a very successful company and they have a significant hold in the market. I feel that with my recommendations, to expand sales in India, China, and Russia. <clears throat> they could expand their market even more and possibly climb to number one. Thank you.